Welcome to the tutorial importing a bitmap image without vectorization. So to import an image you can go to the top menu and select file, import, images, or you can click on the import images button from the top toolbar. So this brings up the import images browser window and you can click on the browse button to browse for your file. So you also have the option here of selecting multiple files and to do that you just had to press shift and click on all the files that you wanted from a specific folder to import that entire image set. Um, and then in this field you would have seen a bunch of number signs and some funny symbols but that would just let you know that there's no one specific name but that it will import in an entire group of images. So your next option is um, the layer option, like which layer you're going to put this image on and how will it be processed when coming into that layer. So you could either create a new layer, um, and you have two options here. You can create a single layer named, and you can enter in a new name here if you want. I'm going to keep mine as Pagoda. Or you can actually create layers based on file names. So if all the images you were importing with a single image are named properly, then you could also choose this selection. Um, the add to existing layer I just realized is not enabled because none of my layers are enabled here in the timeline. So I'm just going to cancel this for a minute and enable um, a couple of these layers. Then I'm going to go back, select my image again, And see now the add to existing layer is enabled and the only layers that exist in this um, drop down menu are those layers that are enabled in my timeline. But I'm still going to create a new layer and name it Pagoda. So your next option is whether you want to vectorize imported items. And I'm going to uncheck this because the entire point of this tutorial is to show you how to import bitmap images that are not vectorized. Um, but fear not, in the next tutorial, I will go into great detail about how to vectorize imported items. And um, if you noticed, actually, all the parameters changed here when I unchecked this. But I will go into these parameters as well in the next tutorial. So for now, I'm going to uncheck that and take a look at the next option, Create Symbol for Imported Items. So if you plan to mix your bitmap images with the vector drawings that you've already created in the software, it's recommended that you enable this option. Um, if you're used to using programs like Flash, symbols are quite familiar to you and they're really easy to use. They're used in the same way in Animate Animate Pro. Uh, it's like the image is encapsulated uh, in a symbol and you can just double click on it to enter it and edit your drawing and then return to your scene and then animate that symbol. That's sort of re recommended if you plan to do some mixing. Um, but for this specific tutorial, I'm going to uh, uncheck that and just bring in a raw bitmap image. So the next um, options we're going to take a look at are the alignment rules. And you have three of them. You have fit, pan, and project resolution. So the first one, fit, that's already selected. What this does is if your image is portrait, then the software will bring it into the camera view and make its height match that of the camera view. So there'll be a bit of gray on this side and a bit of gray on this side, but the full image will fit within the camera view. If your image is landscape and you have the fit alignment selected, then it'll do the opposite. It will match the width. So the full width of your landscape image will extend along the full width of the camera view. If you then choose pan, it does the opposite of fit. So if you have a portrait image, it'll match the width and not the height. So that means a good deal of that um, image will probably extend beyond the camera frame and below it or above it. And this is useful so that when you perform a camera pan, um, you can actually scroll from top to bottom. Like say it's a sky and something's falling and you want to scroll, then it allows you to pan you know, in a, in a vertical fashion. And the same goes if you bring in a landscape image, it'll fit the height, but it might actually extend farther along the width beyond the camera frame on either side. And once again, if you have like a landscape, you can um, 
perform a pan as well. So if someone's running in a park with lots of hills and trees, you can pan that across as they're running. So that's why we call that pan. The last one, project resolution, what that does is it takes the resolution of the image and the resolution of your scene and it makes it brings it in as a percentage. So if your project is 720 by 540, like it is in this case, and your image resolution is 360 by some other number, then the width of the image that you want to import, 360, is exactly 50% of your project's resolution 720. So this means that it'll be brought into the camera view at exactly 50% the size of the camera view. And this works in the contrary as well. If you're bringing in an image that's larger than the project resolution, then it'll be brought in as like 208% of the camera view or however, however much larger it is than your camera view or your project resolution, in other words. So the last option we have to look at here is the transparency. Um, otherwise known as the alpha. So you have four options here as well, pre-multiplied with white, pre-multiplied with black, straight and clamp color to alpha. So what the first and second mean is that um, the software will take the edges of your image um, on a transparent layer and feather it with white pixels um, if you select the first option. If you select the second with black pixels. Um, if you select the third straight, it'll feather those edges with black, white, and gray pixels. And if you select the last one, it'll take into account the image's alpha value and um, multiply with that value, but no greater than that value. So 255 is the maximum uh, alpha value you can have. It's full opacity, it's fully opaque. Any number less than that is the number they're going to use to multiply and feather the pixels with. So um, I'm going to leave that like that and say OK. And as you can see, your image is brought in. It's hard to see, so I'm just going to uncheck some of these uh, layers like that. Um, and don't take into account uh, the blurriness in the camera view if you're in the OpenGL view. To really judge the, the sharpness of your image, you should go into the render view. And as you can see, it's automatically much sharper. Um, most things are rendered slightly blurry in the OpenGL view because it's really there for you to work very, very quickly. And it has nothing to do with the final output. The way your, your images, both vector and bitmap, the way they'll look in your final export is really um, indicated in the render view like you see here. Um, but there is a way, and it's actually the last thing I want to show you, to change your the image quality of any bitmap images that you bring in. Um, the first thing you have to do is select your bitmap image. And just so you know, if you see a symbol like that, that's bitmap image. And if you see something like this, the red triangle, yellow circle, and blue square, this is a vector, a vector image. Anyway, so then you would go to the top menu and select View Bitmap Image Quality. And here you can increase or decrease the uh, this value. And this actually just changes the way that you view your bitmap image in the OpenGL view. It has really nothing to do with your output. Because like I said, it's going to be output the way that you see it in the render view. So I'm going to bring it to the max and say OK. And so it looks almost as sharp, I think, as it looks. It's still slightly sharper in the render view. but it got a bit better than you saw it before. And you can also decrease that value if you want to work faster and you don't really care about seeing how it's going to look like as you work. So that's it for the tutorial, importing a bitmap image without vectorization. Stay tuned for the next tutorial, importing and vectorizing images.